evening is going to be really special. You know, we've been hitting it kind of hard and heavy with a lot of COVID talks. We've had all the best experts on here kind of deconstructing every piece of COVID-19. But tonight we're going to have a little fun. These are the experts, the doctors that I know, love, and trust when it comes to talking about this stuff, skin, beauty, health, wellness, and they all have different backgrounds, but even though they have different backgrounds, their, perce their, their perception and their perspective is really fundamental to what we talk about when we talk about health. So these experts, as I always say, are committed to their growth. They're doctors with integrity. They're experts with integrity, many of whom I've broken bread with. And these are your true truth seekers. Welcome panel. It's great to see everyone. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so you can see by the glow with everyone that they have a lot to offer. They have a lot to say. Many of these doctors have been all over the media talking all about their expertise. We're so lucky to have them here. So I want to take a moment and I want to do a little introduction and you're going to see why I'm so proud to have them here this evening. So Dr. Whitney Bow. Hi, Dr. Bo. So hey, I have to talk about Dr. Bo, Bo, she's going to be very humble, like a lot of the other experts. She is a media darling. She is like GMA's go-to. She's unbelievable. She has a practice in Manhattan. She, her hands touch the faces of more people that you see that are household names than you can imagine. And she really knows her stuff. She's kind and compassionate. Dr. Whitney Bow is medical director of integrative dermatology, aesthetics and wellness at Advanced Dermatology PC. She is one of the most in demand dermatologists in America and has lent her expertise to programs like Good Morning America, The Rachel Ray Show, The Doctors and Dr. Oz and numerous publications. Her recent bestseller is the beauty of dirty skin, the surprising science of looking and feeling radiant from the inside out. I love that title. Welcome, Dr. Bo. Thank you so much for having me. Such a, such a pleasure, such an oh, honor. Thank you. Okay, now I've got to introduce you and I'm gonna to have to come clean on this, Elena George. So Elena <laughs> is one of my best friends. And so I, I'm so happy that she's here on so many levels because she has been kind of my spiritual guide for many years. In addition to really taking my career and sitting down with me and making magic happen, she has poured into me goodness. And I think part of the reason why she radiates is because she's just full of goodness. Yeah. And it's just such a pleasure. So over 30 years in the business of making people look fabulous, Elena went to beauty school and college for business management. Her first big launch was working with Salt and Peppa as their hair hairstylist and move on to their makeup. She is now a makeup artist for the stars. She understands the importance of skin as, it, as, as it's a palette for makeup. Elena has worked on The View and GMA and is the recipient. Now I want everyone to hear this. She's the recipient of eight Emmys. She's <laughs> no joke. And when I tell you her hands touch the biggest celebrities. She works on me. I love when she does my makeup. It <laughs> never looks so good. Can I just say something? Don't hey, wait a minute. Feel? Not just women, too. <laughs> Him. <laughs> Him, too. And can I just say something? After she touches you, don't you feel kind of like you got a blessing? Oh, my gosh. And you have the best time in her green room, right? We have, we like talk and chat yeah. and try the different nest. products. Yes. It's, it's the nest. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tony Yoon. So Dr. Tony Yoon and I have known each other for a long time. And I have to say, he is, so when he first wanted to do a book and wanted to do different things outside of the office, I was, I think, I, I, I can be honest in saying this, I was one of the first people with whom he connected. And we talked about mailing and all that kind of stuff. And we have been connected ever since. What I love about Dr. Yoon is I have never heard of a holistic plastic surgeon. I mean, this guy gets the body, he gets it. He's a good family man. He's been a tremendous friend to me. Dr. Yoon is considered one of the nation's best known experts in looking younger with his, without surgery. Without surgery, mm. his motto is true beauty is holistic. 
and he believes all people can achieve their true beauty using a combination of holistic factors which do not necessarily involve surgery. He's been featured on the Rachel Ray show like all the time. The Doctors, The Dr. Oz show, show, Fox and Friends, and many, many others. His most recent book, Playing God, The Evolution mm -hmm. of a Modern Surgeon, is really just one of a few books that you have out. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, and I would just want to say one more thing as an addendum to everything I've already said. I know for a fact, he turns people away all of the time for surgery and said, you know what, there's a better way. So you've got to say, this guy goes for the mission and not the money. I love that. So Thank you. We're so happy that you're here. So happy Thank you're you. here. So I'm going to go next to Dr. Suzanne Bennett. I just call her Sparkers, Sparkles. Okay. Uh -huh. So I don't care when you see her. I don't care what day it is. She sparkles. She always has something good to say. She always has something, some value to add. She walks into a circle, walks in a room, wherever she goes, I know what she's thinking. How can I add value? And she really displays that. I'm, I, I'm really happy to have her as a friend. Dr. Suzanne Bennett is an internationally recognized natural and integrative medicine expert specializing in the field of allergies, clinical nutrition, and anti-aging medicine. She's the founder uh, of the Wellness for Life Center in Santa Monica, California. And all, for over three decades, she's been in clinical in clinical practice, she successfully treated thousands of patients suffering from allergies and chronic illnesses like headaches, migraines, digestive issues, autoimmune disorders, joint and muscle pain, brain fog, and chronic fatigue due to infections and mold toxicity. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Killian. I'm so happy to be here. You have to mention the kimchi diet. Oh, wait, we're getting that. We're getting to that. Oh, you don't worry. It. Don't worry. Oh. And, and, you know, so she wrote a book called The Kimchi Diet. It's absolutely fabulous, but we're going to kind of dive in. You, you gave away the secret of the night. I just want to <laughs> let you know that this, you, you outed us. <laughs> That's okay. Yes. That's okay. okay. You got so much more to talk Everybody's about. heard of the book. Come on. Okay. Thank you. You're right. Thank You're you, right. Tony. So Dr. Amy Killen, so, doc, uh, so Dr. Killen's a new friend, but I have known her in the circles and I've known her to be someone of such passion, such mission, and she's really done so much to, to, be, to get her mis mission and her message out there in the very best way. And she's a truly a good person, happy to have her here. Dr. Amy Killen is a leading anti-aging and regenerative physician. After years in the emergency room, Dr. Amy received training in anti-aging and regenerative medicine and has ob obtained additional training in stem cell regenerative therapies. She's an international speaker, a clinical practice owner, and frequent media guest. Uh, recent headlines in the Times London said about her, can't get no satisfaction, this woman can help. And guess what, she's a doctor. <laughs> So happy that you're here. I, you know, this is just such a great panel. So we're going to get right into it. And I have to tell you, this whole panel, it's a little bit about being selfish on my end, because I've noticed that during this whole shutdown that I've kind of gone, gone down the tubes. And I, I think of myself as someone who, who knows what they're doing. So I have to say this whole idea of resetting and refreshing, I, I am so eager for this information. I'm gonna start and pin this to you, Dr. Bo. Yeah. So Dr. Bo, you're a derm dermatologist. You started your career path when you worked uh, at an acne clinic of all things. And so I think that really uh, showed you as from what I understand, you understood how the face and the skin could really deeply affect someone one way or the other. So here's a question for you. Uh, so why worry about our skin at a time like this? Should we be worrying about our skin? And you say that healthy skin is truly skin deep and it's transformative. So can you talk about that? I mean, are we being it's, crazy? It's not just skin now? deep. It goes, it goes a lot deeper than the skin. So, you know, I, I view the skin as a window into our overall health, right? So it's sort of a reflection of what's going on underneath. It's almost like a litmus test. Like if your skin is acting up, if you're, a lot of my patients are reaching out to me and right now they're experiencing flares of whether it's, you know, acne, rosacea, eczema, um, or just they're getting some weird rash that they don't know where it came from. People's skin is acting out and 
it's not just about the skin. The skin is very much, it's the one organ that we can see, mm -hmm. right? But it's very much telling us what's happening inside of our body. So it's reflecting things like what we're eating, right? Every single day, what supplements we're taking, our diet. It's reflecting things like our sleep, you know, what kind of quality sleep? Are we actually sleeping? Are we getting to sleep? Are we staying asleep at night? It's reflecting things like our exercise habits, right? Are we moving every single day? And of course it reflects our stress levels. And, you know, it's one thing if we go through, you know, acute stress, right? Fight or flight, you know, that's a good thing. If you, you know, if you need to run a marathon or run a race or you're giving a presentation, like you want your heart to beat rapidly. You want that kick in your step. But what we're living in right now is a state of chronic stress. Chronic stress takes a real toll on our health. And you're going to see that in your skin. So, so no, skin is not something that's fatal with the exception of melanoma, et cetera. But for the most part, skin conditions are not going to kill you, but it is very, very important to pay attention to your skin because your skin tells you what's going on underneath. And quite honestly, your skin has a major impact on your quality of life, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, right? So, so if you don't really take care of your skin, you're not really going to be the best version of yourself. I agree. And I've, I've actually seen people that were traumatized over cystic acne and over a number of other things. And particularly for children, I don't think that people really can key, can key in to how devastating it can be to the, to the personality and to really confidence in someone, as you said. So it really yeah. matters. So one more question, Dr. Uh, Bo, the, the gut health relationship to the skin. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I know you have a book out, The Beauty of Dirty Skin, where you probably speak a lot about this in, in that book. But so what is the connection? And uh, do you think that the junk food that people are eating right now, is that going to make them come on the other side of this and just have a, need a whole new makeover? So this is something that we obviously have in common, right? That we sort of understand just how important the gut is. So there is something called the gut-skin connection. The gut and the skin are intimately connected. And so if our gut is inflamed, our skin is inflamed. Mm. And we're reaching for, especially during a time like now, when we're reaching for comfort foods, right? Refined, processed comfort foods, devoid of fiber. What happens is we'll eat that kind of a diet and that will shift the type of bacteria in our gut. It leads to something called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and it stalls our digestion and our gut lining becomes permeable, becomes leaky. So all of those sort of toxins that are supposed to be maintained and housed within our gut are now leaking out into our bloodstream, and that's triggering an inflammatory response throughout our body, and it will show up in our skin. So yes, what we're eating directly impacts our skin, and about 70 to 80% of our immune system actually lines our gut. People don't realize that. 70 to 80% of our immune system resides in something called the GALT, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So you can imagine that what we're eating also impacts our immune system, which is something that's very important right now, right? So I think that people are should be focused right now very much on diet. I'm doing a boot camp right now, a Boglo boot camp with Good Morning America. You know, we're in week two. Last week was all about diet. You know, on my Instagram channel, my website, it's all about what we're eating, how it impacts our immune system and our skin. Mm. So, uh, and I hope everyone gets a chance to see you on Good Morning America because you do such a beautiful job with this boot camp. You really are getting the message out. Dr. Yoon, let me uh, throw this one to you. So you're a holistic plastic surgeon. I've never heard, I've never heard of that before. Uh, so, so what do you say when someone comes to you and they say, you know, uh, what about Botox? What about fillers? What about microneedling? What is your stance on that? And what do you say to the women who can't get any right now? And there's a lot of people's faces that are dropping. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a lot of areas, it's against the law to actually be doing these procedures. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually in my area, there was a doctor who was recently uh, arrested for doing non-essential procedures at this time. So you've mm -hmm. gotta be careful. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's now been about six weeks since a lot of businesses and practices have closed. Typically, Botox lasts about three to four months. So some people are probably noticing some of those wrinkles coming back. Now, the good thing is there are so many things that you can do to help to improve your skin and to make your skin look better.
that don't necessitate going to the doctor. Doing this three week boot camp with Whitney is a great idea because yeah. you can focus on the food that you eat, clean skincare, and even the, the mindful part of it. Meditation, yoga, exercise, there's so much that you can do that will impact your skin. Now on a more practical level, just for a quick question, if somebody's saying, hey, my Botox is wearing off, I'm starting to get wrinkles here, I'm starting to get crow's feet, what do I do? One simple option is to use silicone patches. There are commercially available patches that are actually cut into shapes that you can put over your crow's feet, over your frown lines, over your forehead. And they're not gonna do exactly the same as Botox, but they can help to splint the wrinkles and even provide some intense hydration. So something that you can do to help prevent them from coming back until you get the chance to see your doctor again. That's great advice. And uh, I, I have a question. Can you prevent wrinkles by a good skin regimen? Or do you think it's kind of predictive or predominant of maybe genetics or lifestyle? Well, like I think everything in life, it is multifactorial. And so of course, there are a lot of things that you can do to prevent wrinkles, starting with sunscreen and using the appropriate sunscreen SPF 30 broad spectrum. Uh, and so that's the first thing to do, uh, obviously using the right clean skincare products. I do recommend if you're watching this and you're like, geez, I go to Sephora, I go to the drugstore, I have no idea what to buy. Start with a retinol moisturizer, use that every night. And mm -hmm. if you do that, that's a great start. You don't have to buy all these expensive things, get a, a, a good cleanser, um, get a, a, a vitamin C serum in the morning, some sunscreen and a retinol moisturizer at night, and you'll be way ahead of 95% of everybody else. And I have to ask you, and I'll get to everyone, but I have to ask Dr. Bo and Dr. Yoon this, what is the deal with sunscreen? Because on one hand, we're told that our vitamin D is virtually blocked by these sunscreens. And we know that low vitamin D is pandemic. It, it truly mm -hmm. is. I think in my entire time when I was doing clinicals, I think I maybe tested two people the entire time. And I tested everyone on vitamin D. No one had normal values. So I'm just curious, and, and this can go to either one. How, how do you solve this problem of getting enough vitamin D, but yet using what's protective to the skin? I personally take a vitamin D supplement and I recommend that for my patients as well. And there is sort of a very specific window um, that you want to really um, try to target because, you know, we're now learning that if you go above a certain level of vitamin D, it can actually cause calcifications um, in your arteries and have some negative health consequences mm -hmm. as well. You know, so I do think it's important to get a baseline vitamin D. And as, as you said, most of us are, are surprisingly low, um, but I actually don't really advocate getting sun because there is really no such thing as safe sun. You know, I think that even when we apply our sunscreen, we're not applying it regularly enough to really block out enough of the UV rays. Um, so I don't think that it's sort of, it's one of those things that's not worth the extra UV exposure to get the vitamin D. So why not get it through supplementation? It's very simple. Uh, and, and Dr. Yoon, how much do you recommend? I think it really depends actually on what your levels are. So you don't want to just buy a vitamin D supplement and just start taking it. Uh, ideally, you do want to get your levels checked. Now, there are a lot of multivitamins that do contain vitamin D. Uh, if you're not sure what your level is right now, this isn't necessarily the time to go to a, get a check necessarily because you don't want to expose yourself until things get better. Um, but you can always try a uh, over-the-counter multivitamin supplement to start out with. Now, I would agree in general with Whitney. Now, Whitney is being a good dermatologist with perfect skin. Um, there is also that part of it too that, that, you know, in me that understands that there is something therapeutic about going outside and feeling the sun on your skin. Uh, and so I do think that you do have to kind of temper that. Now you can also always put sunscreen on and go outside and, and get that sun that's going to still feel um, good for your soul as well. But um, in general, I, I would agree with Whitney. Yeah. And we can't burn. That's the thing. So... I have a question, uh, Amy. Uh, so Dr. Keelan, your specialty is anti-aging, regenerative medicine, and you really believe that a lot of therapies you can do just as good as you know, surgery. And there's therapies that are as good as surgery. Now I have to know about this. Do you really think we can act that these therapies can outdo the knife? There's still a place for surgery for some people. You know, some, uh, some problems, need surgery if you want to get a certain sort of solution to them. But I do think in the last uh, decade or so, we've 
develop strategies that sort of redefine um, how we treat aging skin and how we prevent aging. So, you know, when you combine the integrative approach where you're actually preventing um, a lot of the aging from happening, and then you add to that some of these regenerative therapies, and, and in my mind, regenerative therapies includes anything that gets your own body to start healing itself and regenerating the skin. So increasing collagen production, increasing elastin, hyaluronic acid, all the things in your skin that start to go down as you get older. If we can kind of trick our body into you know, increasing the production of those things, whether that's through lasers or light therapy or stem cells or other sort of um, biologics um, or nitric oxide or other different modalities, if we can kind of trick our bodies, then we actually can continue to make those main components of skin that otherwise we wouldn't be making at that age. Mm. So I have to ask you this question out of curiosity. So what developed your love for these therapies and such when you started out, you know, hardcore in the ER dealing yeah. with you know, all those, those cases that are tough. I mean, the ER is the grind, that's kind of the grind work. And then a lot of people where they segue after that, but what, what made you go into this? from ER? You know, I started, I was in the ER for about 10 years and towards the end of it, you know, I was seeing all these patients that were coming in over and over again for chronic medical problems and, you know, things that I was kind of just putting a bandaid on, sending them out. They come back again a month later, back again a month later. And so I was seeing that we weren't really treating a lot of these chronic problems. At the same time, I was suffering from just a ton of stress and a bunch of little kids at home and not sleeping and not eating well, you know, all the things that you do wrong. And I just realized that in order to help myself uh, be healthier and help my patients be healthier, I needed to learn more about you know, at longevity medicine, integrative medicine, some of these things. So I got into that field specifically, did that for a few years. And what I found was that I had a lot of patients after we got their hormones balanced and their energy was back and they were feeling better, they would come back to me and they would ask me for help with either their skin or their sex lives. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up sort of specializing in these integrative and regenerative therapies for skin and sex. And uh, that's a lot of what I do now. You know, it's funny because as clinicians, what happens is you know, they find you and after a while, after you've been doing it for a while, I mean, I, you know, as, as many of you know, did a lot with weight loss and I didn't actually choose that. It chose me. It just turned out that I was in, you know, had a family based practice and over time it was always the women coming in and coming in and saying, you know, what can I do? And it just kind of morphs into that. And so I think sometimes it chooses us. So let's go to you for a moment, Elena. So you've been a makeup artist for 30 years. Again, you won eight Emmy Awards. So you obviously you know, have a passion and love for makeup. And, and we all, as little girls, we love our little fluff and our little trinkets and our little you know, cosmetic bags. Most of us really love that. But you turn this passion into you know, a, a, an enormous career. So, I mean, massive. So I have to know, where did this come from? Did you always know from the beginning this is what you wanted to do? And, and, and why do you sparkle so much? <laughs> That's what I want to know. You know, I really love tapping into women's and men's confidence. And that is the beginning of when, they, when we get introduced just sharpening their confidence, just pouring in, as you said earlier, and getting to know the person, that is like the sparkle of it. That's mainly the recipe of the way I work. Mm -hmm. And I just enjoy, you know, creating looks and keeping up with the trends too, because in the midst of all of this, we do have a tendency to kind of get stuck in a certain way that we want to look all the time. Well, meanwhile, the world is evolving and moving and changing and changing colors, changing textures and stuff like that. And you kind of get caught in this comfort zone that it's like, oh, honey, you're still looking like the 80s when we're like in 2000s. <laughs> so I try to help people to build their confidence to kind of move forward and not feel um, scared to try a new color or try a new foundation or, you know, do their eyebrows, try some lashes, just little things that will make them enhance them. Not, not a mask, but an enhancement. Mm, and I love that. And you absolutely realize that in, mm -hmm. you know, in a, by a long shot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to, again, be a little selfish here. So pardon me, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to talk about a personal problem. Uh, right off the bat here. So a lot of women found out the hard way, including myself through this pandemic, that those eyelash extensions weren't the best idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I found out about a week ago, in addition to everything else falling apart, extensions sticking out all over the place, you know, my nails are all funky, like I could go on and on and on, like all these things, mm -hmm. but I had no eyelashes. Right. I mean, it was like it, 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 it was, I had no eyelashes. Right. So I, so if, when you look on Instagram, it's a riot mm -hmm. because you see mm -hmm. all the women, you know, coming out and they're saying, I know, and then you see all these products. So, right. Because I know that there's so many women experiencing this right now, as, as, as small as it might seem in terms of what's going on out there. But, you know, we, we still care about right. how we look. So what would you tell someone that's going through that right now? Well, I mean, I had the, the you know, uh, experience right now myself, you know, where I was getting the eyelashes, the extensions. And I'm all for it. But there is a price to pay for that type of you know, doing up the eyelashes because it's, it's like a weave on your eyelashes. Just think about it like that. It's like another type of extension, which is heavier than your natural lash. And it leads to like uh, alopecia of the lash. See, you're not aware of it because every two weeks you're going to get the, you know, the extensions put back in, yeah. you know, like the refills and stuff like that. And so I finally came to that realization and also with the woman that I do, which is uh, Robin Roberts every morning, you know, we had a sit down and we talked about it and she was like, you know, we got to come up with a solution on how to not break all of my lashes are like gone. And I'm like, you know what, you're absolutely right. And so are mine. So let me see what I can do. Well, with the help and advice of Dr. Bo, I went into her office as I usually do every three months. Um, I was like, you know, Dr. Bo, I'm having problems with dry skin. That's how I started first, right? And then I said, and you know what else? I, I have this regimen in my head, and I think that I would like help with bringing back the lashes. So she suggested Latisse, which is a prescribed uh, eye serum that you put on your lashes. Now, I feel like during this pandemic, this is the perfect time to start a regimen. This is the perfect time to let go of the extensions, okay, and start a regimen. So these you can, things? You mean these things or these things? I mean, even those two, but that's like another show. Yeah. But as far as the, <laughs> <laughs> I as love her as so the, much, right? <laughs> as far as the eyelashes are concerned, though, seriously, um, a lot of women are noticing because of the pandemic, we're not able to go get our extensions. I mean, our... Uh, refills and so their lashes are completely off they're real thin they're stubby and the whole thing you could barely put mascara on it to make it even come out or whatever so I use the Latisse and now I use that every day I actually have it I'm show and tell guys so I have the prescription right here right here and I use it every day or every other day and it actually really works. Now, it does take time for you to really see the results, but you have to be patient with it and very careful and not allow the liquid, you know, to fall into your eye. So you know, they package it with 30 um, of these things right here. It comes with it. So one for each eye and one pack per day. And I, I, like, I absolutely love that because that's just completely sanitary. Now, the one fault that I feel as a makeup artist is that sometimes the brush is a little big. And so it tends to make some of the liquid kind of like more, come out more. So what I did was I invested in two of these. Can't find the other one. But I invested in two of these, if y'all can see it. It's really thin and it's synthetic. And it doesn't like fill up with a lot of the liquid. What is it, so Elena? I can't it's a brush. It's an eyeliner brush that okay. you can buy at any makeup store or Sephora. And you can just do a drop inside of the cap and just dip one brush for this eye and the other brush for the other eye. And just do it as a liner. Am I right, Miss uh, Bo? You're so on point. It's more precise. There's less excess, and you can yes. also put it on the eyebrow, and too. You, yep, and you can entertain Ooh. the eyebrows. Okay. And so it's like one for each eye. 
Now that totally works. There's other things in the market that are out now, which I'm noticing even more and more. And that is they have a new type of adhesive that's coming into the market that doesn't do as much damage as the other glues were doing. So you still can use the lashes, but it won't be as damaging as the extensions that are out there. Then another thing that they're doing is like coming out with like magnetic type of eyeliners. And that's also another solution to still being able to use, you know, extensions like you know like lashes like this but they all have little tiny magnets right there you put the liner on and literally it sticks now i have to say not all magnetic eyelashes are the same uh -huh. but trial and error until you find the one that you're comfortable with and that's what i've been doing and that's the solution that i really came up with with me and rob and and it's been working and so we use the regimen of the Latisse every day and then we use the magnetic lashes on her and now her lashes are growing back and I'm like oh this is really working so you have the choice of the Latisse and then you have Revita Lash that's another uh, serum out there in the market that it also works properly too and then you have these little I mean there's so much out there and you just have to really take the time and learn the tutorials you know and pay attention or go to your makeup artist that's local and that knows how to apply mm. these types of things and you'll learn and you'll get your lashes back but i say start with a regimen stick to it be consistent and you will have your natural lashes growing back in no time that is, the best news. that is the best news i've heard i love that <laughs> have more to hear from Elena. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bennett, mm -hmm. hello. So Dr. Bennett, you authored the book, The Kim Chi Diet, mm -hmm. and you are such an advocate. And But I have to say, I want to know what this kimchi does to our skin, because I know you have a one-two punch. You have these masks. By the way, I use her masks, and I'm really excited about I mean, they're very unusual. Her mm -hmm. masks are not, you know, I'm a big fan of collagen. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you know, I don't get any money for selling any of this. I'm not a part of any um, of these products. I'm, yes, me too. Same thing. <laughs> I want to offer you value. I want to offer you value. I want you to be able to have some take home. So I always want to know, okay, great. I, I love what you're saying. Where do I get it? What do I do? So Dr. Bennett's masks are fabulous. So uh, let's talk a little bit about kimchi, skin, masks. Go. You bet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, earlier we talked, thank you, Tony, that we talked about the kimchi diet book. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in practice a long time and I've been, I'm Korean, I'm from Korea. And I really didn't know the value of kimchi, which is the, basically it's an ancient traditional fermented food that was, uh, has been, um, gosh, made for thousands of years in Korea. And it's vegetables and a mixture. And it's a, a way in the thousands of years when we didn't have refrigerators, right? It was a way of preserving vegetables during the winter time. It could be preserved for four to six months out of the year, uh, you know, pretty much um, in the ground. That's the way we used to do it in ancient times. But what it does is it, it creates this magical um, mixture of vegetables, antioxidants, but also lactic acid bacteria. But I have to stop you for one moment. Can food really make a difference with your skin? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Dr. Whitney talked about that. Absolutely. The reason is, is because number one, you need nutrients for the health of your skin. The only mm -hmm. way that the skin really gets healthy is from the inside out. It's not the opposite. And I look at the outside skin just like the external skin going internally through your mouth down. Mm -hmm. And it all is connected. We also have a microbiome of the skin. So whatever you've got, the microbiome of the gut, we know a lot about that now. The diversity, you want a robustness, lots of good bacteria, and there's a, we need that healthy balance. We need the same thing with our external skin. Individuals who have eczema, psoriasis, um, mm -hmm. uh, let's say cradle cap, uh, mm -hmm. athlete's feet, uh, even if you get warts on your body, that's because You've got these conditions because internally you've got dysbiosis and you've got immune issues uh, as well as on the external because you're having you know, all kinds of bugs fighting on your skin as well. You'll be surprised in just a small patch, about an inch by inch, you might have about a million 
bacteria on mm -hmm. it, including we got tons of viruses and even let's say mites. You know, uh, you mentioned earlier, Elena, about the lashes, you know, mm -hmm. when you get these extensions. Well, mm -hmm. did you know you can have mites? There's mm -hmm. a good Mm -hmm. Little demon oh, yeah. mites. Little I, I love this panel. That. This is so that. awesome, guys. Yes. Yes. Right? We've got yes. these. We've got to really be careful, and we want to start where food. Yes. This is the easiest way to be able to manage your microbiome in your gut. Now, why is the microbiome in the gut so important for the skin on the outside? As as uh, Dr. Whitney said, it builds your your actual leaky gut. But did you know mm -hmm. kimchi is the number one gut sealant ever, mm -hmm. ever? Mm -hmm. Probiotics, when, you, when we talk about fermented foods, the reason why we want to have it is because of the lactic acid bacteria. When you make kimchi, we use salt to brine and that kills off all the bad bugs that are in dirt, right? That's on the vegetables. I say that I can take anyone, you take uh, salt, sea salt, mm -hmm. garlic, ginger, and a vegetable, Oh, it can be anywhere in the world without any, any fire, any stove, nothing. You don't need it. I make kimchi outside all the time. This mm -hmm. is ancient food for the modern health. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's ancient food for all of us. And when you start eating this kimchi, you're going to start to feel a difference because you're going to you know, feel like, oh, you know, people who've got constipation, oh my God, they start having good bowel movements. They're going to notice that they have more energy. Sometimes if you eat kimchi, you'll even feel like, wow, I feel calm and I can go to sleep better because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's affecting what's called psychobiotics, the good bacteria is in our gut that's great for our brain, right? We've got that gut skin. We've got the gut brain connection. We've got so much going on with the microbiome and we just literally don't even know enough. I mean, I became a kimchiologist uh, after I came back from one of my vacations in Korea, because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Only you could come up with that term. Not another, no, right? <laughs> I love her. <laughs> we're all going to have lunch and be <laughs> here for four hours. And we're all going to have horrible breath. <laughs> and a touch of gas. <laughs> ever want time alone in the house? You ever want time alone in the house? You crack open some kimchi gone you'll have a whole day to yourself <laughs> well there's no doubt there is a a specific kimchi odor but you can cut it by ginger in my book the kimchi diet i talk about how ginger is the remedy for kimchi breath you just drink ginger tea you got to try it chew some ginger fresh ginger all that smell will go away the sulfur is cut by the the actual ginger ginger itself it's certainly and, worth it. Any, any odor that, you know, you it, it really, you just become accustomed to it because I don't even, I'm not even aware of it anymore because it's, you know, a daily thing for me. So I don't right. even think about it. And the trade-off is certainly worth it. But let's talk a moment about these the masks. Uh, and then I want to get to Dr. Amy. I've got some piercing questions for her. So uh, Dr. Bennett, tell us about, you know, you talk a lot about kimchi and, you know, and, and what that does. And I know that it, you re it really shows up on your skin when you eat that. I notice a huge difference. Why, why the masks? Because you've been talking about collagen masks. College, you've been touting these forever. So um, I would say that uh, my company, Purigenics, has been the first company, pretty much the only company that has the transdermal ionized collagen. And what that means is it's actually a, a special kind of collagen that you apply to the skin. Transdermal means on your skin and it, it gets absorbed. So it's this unique product that's a refrigerated collagen and it's ionized so that it has an electrostatic gradient. So it's a mask. You've seen them on, you know, Instagram, a lot of celebrities. If you see any, any um, of the plastic surgeons that use this white mask with a hole, you know, that is our mask because all our, our company caters to the plastic surgeons, dermatologists, meta spas, laser centers. Mm -hmm. And the doctors use it con conjunction, con conjunction with all of their treatments. If they're doing laser, they put our mask on top. If they're doing any kind of microneedling, they put our mask on top. If you do IPL or any other, any other uh, treatment, you put the mask on top mm -hmm. post post therapy so that it can enhance. And it's amazing for individuals who do, uh, let's say uh, fillers, because fillers are spot treatments, right? We only do certain areas, but the mask is the whole face. So what I found was 10 years ago, was it 10 years, a little bit longer than 10 years, my skin, I'm 57 now, 
But when I was like 45 years old, my skin was just crap. As you can see, I'm really tan. You just I go like, on and on and on after you say 57. Just so I know. It's like a total truth. <laughs> <laughs> when you see yeah. her, when you see her, you just cannot believe that she's pushing sixty. You can't yeah. believe it, truly. It's crazy. I remember the first time you told me that. Even her décolleté all through here, there's nothing. There's, it's unbelievable. I remember, I remember here, uh, Kellyanne. One time at one of our events, she's she's staring at my, you know, chest. It's like what? There's like no wrinkles. Well, the key to that, I I I use my collagen there, but it's really you got to sleep on your back. Don't sleep on your side because mm -hmm. your breast tissues, it's going to, you know, especially mm -hmm. women, it's going to make those creases. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my secret. I learned that from you, Dr. Bennett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's right. But with this collagen mask, what's really wonderful about it is that it gets, I, because it's ionized and the way the tissue engineer doctor, it's from Korea, by the way, Seoul, Korea, it was originally pre, uh, made uh, scientifically for burns, burn healing and bone density strengthening bone density, the collagen. But they found out that the, the way they created it, uh, changing the structure of collagen, because collagen is a big molecule, they created a, a tighter molecule, getting rid of the tele telepeptides, which are the allergenic portion of collagen. This is porcine-based. And then they found that, that um, by succinylating it and creating a really good healthy pH, it was going into the skin basement layer and activating the fibroblasts as well as your own ability to strengthen and thicken the density. So if you pinch my skin, I've got thick skin, you know? And my skin on my, my, my arm is much thinner than my skin on my face because I use it on my face and I've been using it for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, now that I think of it, it's about 12, 12, 13 years. And when you use this regularly, it will reduce your fine lines. It mm -hmm. will plump up your skin. I put it right on my lips and my lips get plumper. I, I've mm -hmm. never had thick lips, but they're decent. I don't have to, you know. Um, well, I'm you not know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of collagen and I'm definitely a fan of these masks. They truly do. I can notice a difference before and after. I made sure I slapped one on before we came on tonight. They do really make a difference. Dr. Amy, uh, so you talk about these treatment pro protocols that you have, uh, and one of them was interesting to me, uh, nitric oxide. And what, so how are you using that? I'm very curious. Well, I talk about nitric oxide a lot just for general health. I think it's one of the things that we just don't talk about enough as far as health goes. Uh, nitric oxide is one of the main chemical messengers that is responsible for vasodilation, which means opening up the other blood vessels so you can get blood into different parts of your body. So you can imagine it's important for like the health of all your organ systems because you have to get blood there. Um, but it also has all kinds of other roles in the body. It helps to repair blood vessels. It helps to stimulate and recruit stem cells to different areas. Um, and the skin also has multiple cells that can make nitric oxide. So both the epidermis and the dermis have nitric oxide producing cells. Um, what happens is as we get older, like with all of these things, we make less and less nitric oxide. We lose the ability to make it. So by the time we're 40 years old, we're making about half as much as we were when we were 20 years old. And that just gets worse as we get older. Um, so this is kind of a big deal for, for skin as well as for blood pressure, for sexual health, for um, triglycerides, all kinds of things. Um, but so with the skin, there's a lot of uh, functions of nitric oxide. So it helps with uh, skin barrier function, so keeping the skin barrier intact. Um, it's helpful in, like I said, it's an antimicrobial, so it can actually decrease um, inflammation and it has some antimicrobial properties. Uh, of course, blood flow, which is huge. Obviously, a lot of the things that happen with aging are just lack of blood flow um, to the skin, to the organs. And, and as everyone I think out there can attest, like when you have like a nice glowy face, like after you've gone for a run, for instance, and that's a nitric oxide mediated glow. Exercise is one of the big things we can do to increase nitric oxide production, which results in vasodilation. You get blood everywhere, including your skin. Um, so we need that blood flow, we need the antimicrobial properties, there's some UV, UV protection properties to nitric oxide. Um, so it's one of those things that I think is, is really not talked about enough, but it's super exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it is exciting, Any, all these therapies are. So how does someone deal, so if someone's at home or listening, they're saying, well, what do I have to do? Measure it, take it, what is it? Tell them exactly what they need. Okay, so there's definitely different ways you can get it. Um, you can get it with exercise, like I said. Um, Things like red light therapy or low level light therapy, uh, even UVA, 
which again, maybe not telling you to go out in the sun too much, but some sunlight um, has been shown to increase nitric oxide levels, which may be why it's tied to lower blood pressure and lower diabetes risks and things like that. Um, you can also get nitric oxide from foods. So nitrate rich foods, which are things like green leafy vegetables, uh, as well as beets, pomegranate, even dark chocolate has some decent nitrate levels. Uh, the nitrates in food end up getting reduced to nitric oxide in your body. But one of the keys to that is that you have to have intact, healthy bacteria in your mouth, which is something that people don't think about. So people who are taking like Listerine or antiseptic mouthwashes every day, and they're killing all of their bacteria in your mouth, you're killing the good bacteria as well. So you're actually reducing your ability to make nitric oxide from food. So that's something that I tell people, you know, wow. use mouthwash, you know, occasionally or make your own mouthwash. Don't use the antiseptic stuff that you can buy um, because you're killing these bacteria here. Also acid blocking medications um, like Prilosec, you know, things like that, the, the PPIs we call them. They also can uh, cause problems with acid in the stomach that also prevent your body from being able to make nitric oxide properly. So those are kind of two tricks is, you know, don't use those kinds of mouthwash and obviously talk to your doctor first, but if you're able to get off some of those acid blocking medications, that may be able to help you make nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get it from exercise, you can get it from light, you can get it from other, other things in your life uh, as well as food. And you can apply it topically. There are some formulations out there now that do a topical nitric oxide um, that, that may also be effective. But for me, I treat the whole body because I think that that's what's most important as far as getting those levels up. I love that. And that's so important. I love the natural take on all of it. I mean, you see this, this is something that just exercise alone is going to make great improvements. Dr. Yoon, Dr. Yoon, you have a lot of uh, tricks up your sleeve, by the way. Um, and I want to employ everyone to go to Dr. Yoon's YouTube station because he is, yes. <laughs> he is Funny, Dr. Bo, do you know the secret about Dr. Yoon? He's incredibly funny. Like, he is. Funny. Dr. Yoon has a lot of secrets. He's got amazing skin. I have a lot of skeletons all. in my closet. You do. <laughs> I'd say you do. He is I didn't know your wife His heart is that. huge and he's hysterically funny. I agree with all of those things. Yes, yeah. So I really want everyone because, you know, when we were talking about as doctors, what we're going to offer people to get them out of this funk, I love what he said to me. When I was asking him, you want to do this one? He goes, you know what, Kellyanne? You know, he just wants to make people laugh. Yeah. That is his contribution to this. He wants to give them content and make people laugh. And I don't know if there's any better medicine than that. So congratulations mm -hmm. on building such a great YouTube platform. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So Dr. Yoon, yeah. tell us, I know that you've got all these home remedy thingamajiggers. Tell us how we can take care of ourselves, look good, and you know, you've got a whole book on this, a PBS special on this. So tell us some of your secrets on looking good naturally. Okay, a few quick things. So I'll do some quick hits. Um, Elena was great with talking about Latisse and, and eyelashes. Uh, one thing that a lot of people are having issues with, especially with all the stress, is hair loss. So you can go to the store, you can get Rogaine, you can get Minoxidil, but topical rosemary oil has actually been shown in studies to be as effective as Minoxidil you do want to use a carrier oil for it, so you don't want to just take that and put it directly on your skin. Uh, but that actually can work uh, with very similar efficacy as actual minoxidil, aka Rogaine, uh, but without a lot of the side effects. So that's one quick tip. Uh, another tip is, is if you have been missing your chemical peels, your lunchtime peels, uh, and you don't want to go out there and get exposed, then you can actually make a peel at home using things literally in your fridge. So you can combine a little bit of honey, with a little bit of milk, with a little bit of apple juice, and create your own little fruit acid peel. Put that on your skin, you let it sit for about 15 minutes, uh, and then gently wash it off with some warm water, and your skin's gonna feel much nicer afterwards. Ooh. Even more simple than that is if you've got a bunch of bananas and one of them is getting overripe, and you don't wanna necessarily save it for some banana bread, you can take that banana, mash it up, put that mash actually on your skin, it contains high levels of vitamin A, which we mentioned earlier, retinol, that's a vitamin A. Uh, and that also, you leave it on your skin for 15, 20 minutes and gently wash it off and your skin's gonna feel soft, moisturized, and much nicer afterwards. So there are a lot of these at-home DIY options that you have, um, and uh, these are just a few to, to consider. What about uh, somebody who is struggling with under their, you know, puffy eyes and all of that? Do you have any hacks for that? 
A uh, simple thing would be to, to uh, steep some green tea, uh, put that in the fridge, take uh, potatoes, and I know we are inundated with potatoes in our uh, local farmer's box that we get every week. Uh, <laughs> chop those up and dip that in the cold green tea, put the green tea in the fridge, dip it in there, put that over your eyes. So you've got a lot of things. The starch in the potatoes will help to lighten up any dark areas. You've got the caffeine in the green tea, which will help to tighten up your skin. And you've got the antioxidants as well, which is great for the skin too. Mm, wow, okay. so helpful. And I see, you know, Elena doing this the whole time. So <laughs> she knows I, I all love this those stuff. remedies. She's got some of these under her sleeve too. Uh, Dr. Bo, tell me, tell me about this circa circadian rhythm diet. I'm really interested. What is yeah, that? So, so I am a fan of, you know, intermittent fasting to a degree. Um, you know, I like to have a period of time when I'm not eating and then a period of time when I'm eating. And I know the classic breakdown is about 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating. But there's new science, very interesting, that's coming out showing that actually eating with the circadian clock or circadian rhythm, meaning eating with natural sunlight exposure, eating with the sun, is actually healthier for us. So it's sort of like a step up from intermittent fasting. If you can actually make that window of eating during the time when the sun is out, it turns out we're actually better able to metabolize calories that we eat in the morning. So if you're eating, say you break your fast at like 10 o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, really the better thing to do is to stop eating when the sun goes down or to try to limit what we eat after the sun goes down. Because if we eat heavy meals after the sun goes down, it sort of messes with our circadian clock. It almost tells our brain that it's daytime again. And so it really disrupts our ability to get into that restful sleep. And our circadian rhythm is very important for our immune function, our overall health and our skin. Hmm. How about stress? You know, a lot of us are we're trying, I mean, I know the world's on a stop, but a lot of people, even though the world's on a stop, they're stressed out. How is stress affecting our skin and what can we do about it? Yeah, so these persistently elevated cortisol levels, our stress hormone, it really targets our collagen or elastic fibers for destruction. It doesn't allow us to repair because we're sort of constantly in this state of you know, fight or flight so we're not able to repair the damage that's being done. So it really accelerates the aging process. It increases inflammation in the skin. So, you know, there are simple things that we can do to help dial down that stress. So things like deep breathing, even just, you know, being mindful. You don't have to know how to meditate. Just breathing can trigger something called the relaxation response. Beautiful science out of Harvard showing that it stops psychological and emotional stress from being translated into physical inflammation. So just breathing, regular exercise, trying to block out blue light before we go to sleep with blue light filtering glasses or using night shift or night mode on our devices. Those are things you can do to really help to dial down our stress levels. Oh, I love that. And so I have to go to Elena because Elena, I know that you work with all these um, A-list -list people uh, on these uh, on their face all the time. Mm -hmm. So tell me your regimen, regimen, regimen. Mm -hmm. That's what you're always talking about. Yes. So can you take us through the regimen that you recommend and that, you know, perhaps maybe the one you've done with Robin Roberts for all this time? What's worked? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I recommend the regimen because it's a consistent practice with your skin. So I say do a mild cleanser, not too much of something that will make your skin, you know, too dry, but something that has a moisturizer in it and like an emollient, you know, it's like cleanse and emollient at the same time. Now, if you don't have neither, just take a warm towel. You, um, they can get like a little of witch hazel or lavender oil, you know, wring it out, just place it on your face, Take, try to take all the film from the outside off of your face. That is so important, especially now with this pandemic thing, we, we have learned that you can't touch this, you can't go like that, you can't <laughs> even do this yeah. because you just don't know. So go. that goes to show that you're, when you're coming in, all that pollution, you're bringing it in, you're sleeping with it and everything, that is not good. So my everyday uh, regimen that I do is I add the uh, vitamin C, as Dr. You know, Yoon say, I put that on my face every single morning after I cleanse it. 
And then I will add like a brightener. If I'm looking to even out my skin, I'll, I'll use like Dr. Perricone, you know, and mind you, I'm not being paid. These are my favorite things. These are the things that I recommend. And I, I know they work. And so that's the reason why I'm just sharing the knowledge. And I like, you know, like brighteners and things like that. Now that is just to prepare the skin. I also like to use um, photo finish, like a primer, you know, before I put the foundation on, because that just makes it like nice and smooth. It actually covers some of the pores also, which allows the foundation to be even smoother and last longer. So those are the kind of regimens that I would suggest for someone who wears makeup every single day. Now, if you don't wear makeup every single day, I will say use a really nice moisturizer, which I love Talix. Yeah, that's and my favorite. I have to tell you, <laughs> Talic, I mean, that brand, Talic, uh, can you spell that? Because I want her to put it in the chat box. I love that brand. So it's T-H-A-L-A-C. And I tell you, I was introduced to this brand five, six years ago. It took me a little while to, you know, like really dive into it and stuff. But when I did, oh my God, it really made a difference. So I do use the moisturizer and I use... Uh, the peel also as Dr. Yoon was talking about the bananas and everything I love that but if you want something else uh, I use their peel also which is like a 10% uh, glycolic peel yeah, 10%. and it really works you really see the difference another good one to get at Sephora is Dennis Gross that's another winner for us um, you know we use this a lot of GMA with the ladies and it's an easy one, two, three, one, two step. And I'll tell you, you see a major difference if you're consistent with your regimen. Mm. So that's, that's her real take home message. Be mm -hmm. consistent. She's always pounding that in my head. <laughs> said, oh, Lena, my skin looks so better during this quarantine. Are you on a regimen? We got to get you on a regimen. Yep. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Bennett, do it. Dr. Bennett, you have so much to offer. Um, you are so knowledgeable in so many things. So tell us, what are some of your secrets? Because, you know, we clearly, she's doing something right. And by the way, when you mentioned your, your age, you know how many people wrote in and said, I'll do what she's doing? What is she doing? So, you know, let me, let me also put her mask in there, Purigenics. Uh, Stacey, if you could type this in, P-U-R-I-G-E-N-I-N. EX. So Purigenics, it's a great mask. Uh, you know, I stand behind that, uh, for using that personally as well. Uh, so talk to me about some of the magical foods you're talking about. I know that you're really into superfoods. I know you're really into good bacteria. And you say it doesn't matter where you live or what native vegetables are you, that you can make kimchi. So, because that's the whole time you're, you're, you're say, talking about making kim kimchi, I got to come clean. I'm thinking I buy, reju you know, rejuvenative foods or whatever I can get my hands on. The thought of making the kimchi with my life and my schedule, I love the benefits. I don't want the work. So, you know, that's just honest. So tell me, like, if I wanted to grab some at a store, what do I buy? And convince me that it's going to take me 10 minutes to make this. Mm. Well, it's not gonna take you 10 minutes, but I will tell you, if I were to make kimchi and I first brine it, and, and the brining part, part, you just put salt on your veggies. I teach you exactly how to do it and you, and you just put it aside, let it brine for an hour to two hours, depending on the type of veggie you got. And then you just cut up your little um, uh, different ingredients and the pa make your kimchi paste. You mix it together and you bottle it and then you put it aside for uh, maybe 24 to 48 hours, depending on the vegetable. I want you to know it doesn't take long to make fermented food. What I mean by that is it doesn't take long of the fermentation process. Uh, when it comes to sauerkraut, it might take four weeks. Kimchi is a two-dayer. It's so easy to make. I make kimchi every two weeks, and I'm used to it because I've been making it pretty much my whole adult life. But I, will, I, I probably made it, yeah, I did make it when I was even younger. But I will tell you, if you don't want to make it, don't worry. Just go to the health food store, and, and go ahead and get kimchi there. Um, some of the Korean stores, you'll get tons of different ones in the Korean stores, the local Asian markets, but some of them might have MSG in it. So you gotta read it, make sure, you know, um, and if you're vegan, 100% vegan, then you gotta watch out for the fish sauce 
or the shrimp paste that's in kimchi. Great information. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Now, when it comes to food, there's a lot of food that is, I call skin food, right? Skin food are number one, water, purified water. You really mm -hmm. need to hydrate. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when people go to see you, Elena, do you use the steam first after you've washed and cleansed? Why? Yes. What is the steam for? That specifically is to hydrate the cells. Yes. You know, there's no doubt if you live in the high altitudes in the Colorado or mm -hmm. you're, you're um, in the deserts, you're gonna have drier and mm -hmm. more prematurely aged skin, mm -hmm. naturally because the water is being stuck, sucked out through your environment. What mm -hmm. I do is I highly recommend you to get a humidifier if you live in dry atmosphere. Now, what is dry? Percentage of humidity should be anywhere from 45 to about 48. Uh, I'm gonna show you, I have this right here today, is my humidifier, it's, it's called a hygrometer. This is the ah. temperature in my house, mm -hmm. and this is the 40, is it 46? Yeah, 46, 46. That's my humidity in my environment. And I have right now behind this, this camera here, I've got a, a humidifier going. If I didn't have it, because right now California is pretty hot, it's been dry, it would be below 40%. Uh, percent. And sure, for sure, my skin will be drier. Now we are all indoors. We don't go very much outdoors anymore because we work now through uh, in being in due to the pandemic and we're mm -hmm. self-isolation and um, quarantined. And I will tell you, because I'm indoors and it's hot, I've got my AC going. I think most of you probably live in places that you don't need an AC, but in LA we do right now because it's so warm. Mm -hmm. AC does the same thing. It sucks the, the, the moisture out of your skin. So water is very, very important. And you want to drink more of it if you live in those dry atmospheres. But, and then food. Now I love antioxidants food from your food. You know, yes, I can take antioxidants supplement wise, but I love taking it from food. And I think my favorite antioxidant of all time is aronia berries, aronia berries. I don't know if you know what aronia, it's called choke berries. Have you ever heard of that at all, anyone? No, so let's put that in the chat box. We're running out of time. Can you spell that out for us, please? Yeah, C-H-O-K-E berries. The same name is aronia, A-R-O-N-I-A berries. I buy them frozen, organic, and you don't need as much because the OREC value uh, is much higher. That's like the antioxidant capacity is much higher than blueberries. Blueberries might be like, I think 9,600 OREC. Um, aronia berries, 16,000. Oh, that's great content. Great content. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great thing to throw in shakes. Dr. Amy, uh, dermal rolling. Can you take us through really quick? Yes, I have a dermal roller right here. I brought one. Um, this is a little device that has little tiny needles. I don't know if you can see them. They're very small, usually about 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters, which is about what I recommend for home. Um, anything deeper than that, you probably want to go into your doctor, get microneedling or something like that, which is going to be deeper. But this is a great tool, um, if done properly and in the right people, to increase collagen production in the school, in, in your skin. So you can have improvement in fine lines and wrinkles. Um, it kind of gives your skin a pinkness. And then over time, you get this regeneration. Um, so I like to do derma rolling, you know, on myself at home, like in the quarantine, I've been doing it, you know, twice a week, I do my derma rolling. Right. It's also a great way to be able to apply topicals to your skin afterwards and get better absorption of those topicals. So you put your favorite serum on top of it, and you've just got those topicals deeper into the dermis where they can become more active. So this is, uh, it's a great little trick, I think. Is it easy to find? There are tons of derma rollers out there. Uh, I have some videos on my Instagram you can look at, but I'm doing a whole series on derma rolling right now. Nice. Um, but there are tons of out there. I would just caution about getting ones that are very deep. Again, over about 0.5 is probably too deep for home. Um, getting good brands and then making sure you're cleaning them properly and know how to use them. Wonderful. Okay, Elena, really quickly, mm -hmm. we're running out of time. But I have to know, like there's so many things I have to know. We're definitely going to have to do this. We're, we're doing a whole panel on makeup, not this Wednesday, but the following. And we're going to have the best in the country. These are like, these are the best out there. They will be on the panel so we can talk more at that. You don't need anybody. Just have Elena be there. You're all set. I have to tell no, you. We'll share the wealth. We're sharing the wealth. Okay, Elena, really quick. That I need to know, what are the top mistakes that we're making with makeup out there? Um, one, not knowing the matching up your texture 
of your skin along with the texture of the foundation. That's number one. If your skin is super dry, I would not suggest that you buy a mattifying type of foundation because then it will look like, oh, uh, it just would not, not right. <laughs> not right. So I was, for a dry skin, I would suggest something more with a moisture, you know, in it. And so that way it'll look nice and supple, not dry. Um, there are so many foundations out there. Uh, the, another mistake that people do is they've never matched the color. It's either too light or too very dark. But if you just take the time just to match to, you know, like right here on the side of your face, mm -hmm. um, that will totally work. Another thing is that people don't take the time to read what type of ingredients are in it and what works best for their skin. Everything is trial and error until you find the one that works for you best. But never be afraid to try something new. Wonderful. I love that advice. Thank you so much. Dr. Bo, I'm going to hit you up again before we do some closings here. Dr. Bo, exercise and beautiful skin. I know we learned a lot from Dr. Amy tonight. What is the deal? Even 20, 20 to 30 minutes of exercise a day is going to actually increase the health, the number of your mitochondria, which are like these little powerhouses in your, in your skin cells. And there's actually beautiful studies out of Canada showing that people who exercise regularly, and we're not talking about like, you know, athletes who are really intense training, like just 20 minutes of brisk walking, you know, any kind of exercise you can do, their skin, when they did biopsies, it appeared under the microscope to be 10 to 20 years younger than the other group who was sedentary that wasn't exercising. So, you know, exercise obviously has so many other benefits for our health, our endorphins, our mindset, our, you know, our, the way that we feel about ourselves. Um, but it really does have dramatic benefits for the skin. So just one more reason to motivate to exercise. One more reason, and I hope you catch Dr. Bo on Good Morning America for her boot camp. You should be talking a lot about this. Dr. Yeah, we're doing it on Instagram. It's really, it's all, it's ongoing on my no, channel. I'm on it. I'm fabulous doing it. Instagrams, fabulous. Thanks, girl. You Tony, you're joining. Yeah. yeah, I'm doing it too. <laughs> Do it, everybody. You've got to. So, uh, Dr. Yoon, I have to know, you know, you've got such glorious skin, as does your wife. I want to know what your regimen is. Do tell. Yeah, I mean, I do. It depends on what's going on, but some very simple things. You got to cleanse in the morning, apply an antioxidant serum, and then typically a sunscreen. Although I'll tell you, I'm not good. If, if I'm inside, I don't apply it. Uh, oh. And then at night, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Whitney. <laughs> and then at leaving. night, oh. you, you have to apply, uh, you have to- really insulted. New York's wash, finest dermatologist. <laughs> wash your face no. at night. <laughs> And then a, a retinol moisturizer. And then the other thing I usually use is a brightening cream, uh, one mm -hmm. that contains kojic acid or niacinamide yeah. or licorice root extract. Those are all good substances. And then every yeah. so often, exfoliating your skin. Yeah, I totally agree with all those things. Dr. Bennett, give me a quick hit on how the heck you are jumping around and you are, boom. I just need to know. And then we're gonna end it because Dr. Bo, by the way, has a, a, a small child that she- I have she's, to say goodnight to my daughter. Yeah, she is homeschooling. And like, this is not a normal time that she's normally ever does these things. So we are so grateful that she's here. Dr. Bennett, give us a hit. Tell us how the heck you have this robust, robust energy. It really has to do with what Dr. Bo said about mitochondria. Mm -hmm. I work on my mitochondria from the inside out. And it is the energy powerhouses of every cell. And if you want every organ system, uh, you know, your brain to work better, you've got to really nourish and give the nutrients to the mitochondria. So what that means is, of course, get off of all the inflammatory foods that we eat, uh, sugar, um, uh, carbs, I'm talking about gluten, carbs, uh, dairy, alcohol, fung fungi foods. You're get a buzzkill, Dr. Bennett. You're a buzzkill. <laughs> Sorry. But it's That's the truth. But every single, you know, completely, you, you can do what you want, but I'm telling you how I optimize it. I definitely yeah. don't, don't drink during the week when I'm working, you know, and, and uh, I, you got to start from the inside for sure. And I take supplements. I, I do take a lot of supplements. I'm a big believer in a multi. If you, you are, you know, doing all the things that 
we do, which is exercise and working really hard, you need that energy and you need to provide the actual building blocks and nutrients for your mitochondria. And vitamin C, B, D, all of this works to feed your mitochondria. But I'm also a big, big believer in amino acid therapy. Amino acids is basically the uh, building blocks for protein, including collagen, including mm -hmm. collagen for our skin. You mm -hmm. need amino acids. And so I actually take supplements, uh, Super 8 Aminos, and it's essential amino acids, and you wanna do it daily, especially vegans. If you're a vegan out there, and you, I, I, I saw this on the chat, uh, there are plant-based foods. Um, I think that's awesome, because I love plant-based medicine. Uh, but you need amino acids because you're not getting enough. I don't believe so. I'm a meat eater. I like protein, but I don't only eat protein. I eat a lot of, lots of plant-based foods. And then I take, I replenish it with amino acids. And there are formulas. I don't know if you're interested in formulas for the brain, but there are things like glycerophosphocholine. Uh, I do a lot of that. I, I like um, acetyl L-carnitine. These are nutrients for the brain, phosphatidylcholine, which is you know, a, a whole other conversation, <laughs> a whole other conversation. But uh, you know, everybody would surely want to do what, what you're doing. And I don't know if you can see the chats coming through. Everyone's saying, mm -hmm. "Gosh, she's so beautiful." She's so. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear. I mean, this is obviously we have to open this conversation again because I, we're so many questions. I have to run. My my little chicken yes. needs me to say goodnight. She keeps ah. popping her little head in. Thank Hi. you guys Hi, so much. So great. Bye. 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 We're gonna close it tonight, and uh, Dr. Bo, really quick. Uh, okay, no, we, we need everyone to get to Dr. Bo. You can go to her Instagram. You can go to her website. We will make yes. sure that if you uh, signed up uh, through the, the through the email link, you'll be getting all of that. Let's just go through really quick. Dr. Amy, tell us where we can get more of you. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Dr. Amy B. Killen. I uh, also have a website, Dr. Amy Killen, and I'm also on Facebook. So just my name, various places. Okay, Dr. Yoon. I'm everywhere. I've got a podcast too. So just look me up and you'll find me wherever. <laughs> Sounds good. Elena, where can people find more of you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Elena George One Makeup, MKP. And you can also email me, eggorgeous at msn.com for any of your beauty needs. Wonderful. And Dr. Bennett. You can find me at, at Dr. Suzanne over at Instagram. I'm on Facebook, at Dr. Suzanne Bennett. And then, of course, my, my website, Dr. Suzanne. And Purigenics, purigenics.com. So I'm pretty much everywhere. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. You can see, like, we, from the questions and everything else, uh, you know, you can see that these, these, this has been really fascinating and interesting for a lot of people. I want to thank all of you for your contribution all of the experts here tonight. You are fabulous. And I, you know, I could just fire off questions all night. I mean, this has just been an, an amazing topic. Again, thank you. Thank you for helping people get through what for many people, this is a dark time. And I think these conversations really help people get through all of this. And you know, my goal with this program is, as it has been from the beginning, is to take people from a place of fear and really take them into, shift that consciousness into a place of empowerment yes. that is the purpose of this the only purpose of this is to empower you we hope we've done that this evening you will see more of these doctors and experts as we move forward with the program doctors night out until tomorrow we have an amazing show tomorrow dr perlmutter if you've heard of grain brain and a lot of other amazing work that he has we will be doing the deep dive doctor's night out deep dive where we take a one-on-one -on -one with a doctor with a lot to say so join us then until then make it a great night we're signing off with all the grace and all the love bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Thank, thank you everyone everybody.